running a dig like that between the ages of what I have right. to say, so 14 and right. 17, um, was an extraordinary experience right. because you know, we had a lot of people working there um, on this, and it had to be organised and run. Kind of and like we were very democratic. Right. There were three of us who ran it. You know, I mean, right, yeah. command and control is all part of yeah. it. Really. Yeah. And, and you can see how clean the photographs are. Well, when I dug that, was the spring of 1942. So that might well be in the church rather than in the wall. Right, okay, that's interesting. Um, I was born in because June 1937. Yeah. Um, what does that make me? Um, it, it, I, am I 14? I, I can't. Even I'm 14, it was a I think. Yeah. Even if it was a high status. Yeah. And look, we cleaned it up. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. So where did you yeah. learn yeah. your archaeology yeah. then? Is that there was Mortimer Wheeler at St Albans in 1949. And Mortimer Wheeler at Stanick in 1952. So you had a seriously good ground in then when you come to dig the so chief inspector of engineering was an old boy of this school, Unless and he was always he was very keen on rugger. Uh, the other thing he's keen on is archaeology. Kind of down and if he heard that anybody in the school well, was interested in archaeology, the he wanted to know all about them. Absolutely. And within yeah. weeks of my getting I mean, there, Brian O'Neill had made contact court, and yeah. ensured that Lawrence Barfield, um, my friend who, with yeah. whom I that dug this, yeah. went off so and dug for his wife. And then the chief inspector himself would come down every season and see how the, the, the dig is going. And he sent the young John Hurst down to the cup spot and he opened the ancient monuments laboratory. So with a then yeah. young Leo that B, be just be beginning to start his archaeology. Well, I mean, we need to speak uh, to Sophie then. And we were incredibly interesting to have a wonderful, yeah. a long, lifelong friend. Brian O'Neill hadn't died very early. That, that but would tell um, us where the lifelong friend. So were you, were you the only archaeologist that the school produced? Oh no, the long, long history. The told us where it was. I mean, Stanley Casson in the 20s, I.E.S. Edwards, Pyramids Edwards. This is where the big great window. 20s. Um, um, Arnold Taylor, the Chief Inspector of Ancient Monuments, Brian O'Neill, the Chief Inspector of Ancient Monuments. Uh, it's monuments. now oh, 10 o'clock on the first day, and we're legacy, listening uh, to uh, Martin, and we who's one of the great in the group, yeah. uh, and the telling us about the work he did here way back in 1952. Uh, we've got his report, we're using that information, and here we're trying to work out where the main walls of this palace might be. Um, Kent is an expert on royal palaces, so he and Jackie are trying to so work like out yeah. exactly yeah. what yeah. some of these structures might mean. Um, and so it's a really critical stage. The first trench is well, going to produce you, large you know, amounts of material, so where were, it goes in uh, is going to be absolutely yeah. critical, oh, because yeah. any trench we put in yeah. is going to be probably going for a couple of days at least. So all these conversations are they do it really critical this time. It gets used in this way. When they start washing the fire.